Hey everyone and welcome to another All About RVs video. Today we're going to take a look at this brand new 2021 and a half Forest River Riverstone Legacy 42 FS KG Toy Hauler 5th Wheel. This is the highest line of 5th Wheel product that Forest River currently makes. This is also the highest line of the Riverstone brand as well as Riverstone has three different lineups right now. We're going to take a few minutes, walk you around the inside of the RV. Then we're going to come back to the outside. Then we're going to close it all up and show you what it looks like closed. We'll be right back on the inside. All right, guys, we're now up inside the brand new Riverstone Legacy Front Kitchen Toy Hauler fifth wall here uh, we're going to start up here in the kitchen section this is where most of the changes kind of took place but uh, we're going to kind of run you through the inside here real quick and then we'll head back out so the biggest thing that changed from the 39 fkth to the new 42 is going to be the kitchen sink dishwasher and stove arrangement so the old version had the sink here in the island and they have now moved the sink over to the slide out section they also moved the dishwasher from the island to the slide out as well so you do have a pull out drawer dishwasher you see pop up there along with the drawer up above you have some storage below the sink and the little flip down uh, like little sponge rack holder thing there in front of the sink Big window overlooking the back side of your campsite. You have an electric outlet over there. You have day-night roller shades in here as well. The sink faucet changed up a little bit, but it does still have the pull-down sprayer. And you have the 70-30 stainless sink setup under mount. Now the countertops changed a little bit, so that's a little bit different coloration of countertop from what it had. And then they also went to these cutting board style sink covers so this did change as well now spinning on around over here to the island section guys a lot of people wanted this big insignia oven that they've been using in the other models in the front kitchen version and now you have it so you have little storage on both sides you have the big insignia oven four burner gas stove top they also made the counter a little bit wider and deeper so that it would fit there but also to give you a little bit more counter space as well and then kind of panning up here you can see the hood range directly up above it uh, where in the previous model they was there was no fan directly above the stove there was just a fantastic fan out in front a little bit so now they put this directly above it is still the fantastic fan but they moved it over here so this will exhaust everything straight out the roof a little bit easier for you so that was the biggest portion of the change to give it a new model number because of that Looking on to the front section, you still have the same front setup. So you have your big Samsung refrigerator, freezer on bottom, ice maker built in. You have storage on both sides of the refrigerator section. Some shelving up top, drawers down below. Little accent lighting. The backsplash section also changed some. So your little uh, tiling and stuff around there changed. Now you do have electric outlet on this side along with the charger piece, uh, the solar charger kit setup because you have a 190 watt solar panel standard on the RV. You can expand it to two additional solar panels if you want, but one is standard. Electric outlet over there on that side. Nice size window. Electric outlet again in the slide out over there. You have the larger microwave with an option for a convection oven. So you can get it either way, depending on your cooking habits. Quite a few drawers built in and some more storage space down there as well. You 
You do have, again, the Whisper Quiet Air Conditioning Systems. Now, the unit comes standard with two of those 15,000 BTU Whisper Quiet AC Systems. This one was ordered with the optional third 15,000 AC. Um, but again, all of them are Whisper Quiets, so when they are running, it is much easier to sit in here and conversate and talk. And especially when you're in there trying to sleep as well, it's kind of nice to have the whisper quiet system just a little more peaceful. Another big window there. Again, that window does open. Um, every window in the camper actually opens, which is a really nice feature. And also, every window in the camper is a dual pane window. So you have two layers of glass helping keep the hot air or cold air out a little bit better. Um, also helps with condensation and moisture issues for those winter camping, camping trips. Over here on the left, you do have a little coat closet thing down on the bottom. And then on the top side, you also have some controls and stuff. We'll go over that here shortly. Your dinette area here pretty much stayed the same. You have two traditional chairs with a little bit of storage built into them. Now the coloration of the tabletop did change. The coloration of the steps you can see across from us there also changed. And you could sit right here this again is a couple's coach it's not a family bunkhouse style camper so this really has two dinette seats for the couple if you do have guests you could obviously sit down there somewhere and they can eat down there or whatever however you want to set it up but it's really built and meant for the couple so you could sit here look directly across watch your tv eat your dinner uh, you could use this as a little bit of an extra office space if you wanted to um, Obviously, you do have the desk down there for an office space, but some customers choose to order it without the desk, and they'll put a second couch like the one on the right over there. So kind of your choice how you want to set that up when you order the RV. Now, there is some USB charger ports and an electric outlet there at the dining bench as well. Do you have a nice metal handle there to help you get up and down the steps? Big Samsung Smart TV down here. That is on a swing arm. That's why there's a strap around it as well. Um, so you can pull it out and kind of pivot it around a little bit if you need to, if you're wanting to kind of watch it a little easier from the couch over there. Now another thing that changed up in the RV is going to be these extra cabinets above the sofa area and the desk area behind me here. Um, the 39 FKTH did not have those. The windows were taller, bigger windows. But they have had a lot of people that love the floor plan but wanted some more storage in the living room area. So they did lower the window height a little bit and put in that extra storage. The sofa also changed as well. Um, originally, you know, a couple years back, they had trifold sofas. People didn't like the way they sat, so they switched to height bed sofas. And the height bed sofas did not allow you to put two couches across from each other out at the same time for beds. So they switched to this new glide sofa. And if you do order the second glide sofa, they now will both open up again. Um, so you could sleep four people in this area if you wanted to. Uh, hopefully you like the comfort of the glide sofa because they're running out of stuff to try and switch to. Uh, but now this is a new sofa down here as well. Over there you have the theater seat. And again, the theater seat has changed as well. Uh, different furniture. And it no longer has the heat and massage built in, but it is still a power theater seat. And it does have the USB charger port also built into each side. Uh, so the sofa did change up some too. Or the theater seat. Your desk area, quite a bit of extra storage space here. 
nice nice room there love that feature would definitely work good for me when i start to travel around when i get able to retire and do more videos like this for you guys um so good little work prep area there if you do need that again more overhead cabinets now i got some stuff out here i wanted to kind of show you guys because a few other things changed the camera system changed to this new brand uh, so you have the new Voyager camera set up here, where before it was the Furion version. And we'll kind of go over that a little bit more when we get outside. This is the new monitor, what it looks like kind of thing. And the bracket to attach it to the window in the truck if you want to. So that is a new setup, and you'll see where they reposition the cameras outside when we get out there. Um, this is also standard. This is the tire pressure monitoring system that's built into the coach. And this, again, can plug into the truck and uh, basically just kind of keep an eye on what's going on with your tire pressure when you're driving down the road. Some of your remote controls, so the outside TV, which is pretty cool. This new outside TV has an FM radio built in. It's hooked up to the outside speakers. And also, uh, uh, basically just kind of allows you the freedom to watch TV and kind of have a good time outside there. Uh, Samsung remote, the new JBL stereo speaker remote, and your fireplace remote. And then over here is a little portable, little blue, I'm um, sorry, uh, DVD player so with an HDMI output. So you could use the DVD player in the bedroom if you wanted or put it here in the living room area. Kind of got the freedom of choice to move it around. Just a small little compact DVD player. Flooring basically stayed the same. This again is the legacy version. So you have the individual planks instead of one big sheet of linoleum. So you do get the better floor when you do the legacy package. Nice big electric fireplace there overlooking you know, your TV area there, so you can kind of get that little homey feel going on. Um, radio changed as well. So before you would get the Bose soundbar um, when you did the Legacy package and an off-brand soundbar when you did the standard Riverstone. Now they've gone to this new JBL speaker, which has kind of like a built-in subwoofer setup. There are two speakers. Turn this light off here so you can see a little better. Um but there are two speakers that are in the ceiling plus the two speakers down here. And I will say it does sound really good. Um, this light setup here, you can actually change it to like three different tones of lighting and stuff. And you have your roof speakers and your speakers down here. Now again, the speakers outside from as far as I can tell just work off the outside TV. Um, even though there is a zone C but uh, I don't believe it works off of these. It just works off the outside TV and the outside radio setup. Now, down here, you do have some more little space there to kind of set something. And also, up here on the bottom, you can kind of see there, that is, there's an electric outlet there and all your TV controls as far as uh, your cable and satellite inputs and HDMI inputs kind of feed right through there. But overall, pretty cool little setup for an entertainment center for an RV. Now at the steps, uh, whether you're going up into the kitchen or you're going into the bedroom area, they have that kind of blondish looking wood they both have step lights built in, and they both have drawers, a drawer on each side built in as well for extra storage. You have the little metal handle there again to get up and down the steps. Up here on the right is going to be your bathroom. This changed a little bit as well, not so much as the space, but the look. So they now have changed up the shower wall. So instead of just a plain white shower wall, it's got kind of a, a textured look to it, kind of a tile look.
little shelves in there. You got your adjustable shower bar. You do have the skylight up above. That's a huge skylight for an RV. Turbo exhaust fan there. Air conditioning and heat both in here as well. And they changed the drain setup for it. Along, you do have the flip down seat there as well. Uh, but the drain used to be like right in the middle. And now it kind of reminds you of something that you've seen in a hotel or something. Uh, but basically the drain's over on one side, so everything kind of flows that direction. Still get the same good porcelain, better lid, toilet, flush flush toilet. Got the uh, little holders and stuff there on the side of the wall, your turbo exhaust fan controls. Got a little cabinet back in behind there. The backlit mirror drawers and cabinet space below again really nice solid surface countertops in here and sink as well going back here into the bedroom area this part really didn't change up a whole lot so you still have the cabinets both sides of the bed you also have the overhead cabinets as well. Whisper quiet air, so you got a pretty nice clean roof section here. You have four AC vents in here, and they're all directional, so you can kind of push the air the way you want it to go. Room to maneuver and walk around the bed pretty comfortably. The slide out over there has your closet space along with four drawers built in there. The Dyson cordless vac also comes with the legacy package. Now there's an electric outlet and USB charger port on both sides of the bed. You do have a pretty good size window there. Again, it's an emergency exit style window, uh, but the window does open in two different ways and gives you a nice view overlooking your campsite area here. Washer dryer stackable, standard on the Legacy and the traditional Riverstone, but it's an option on the new Reserve version. Uh, but you do have the washer dryer on the left there. And then over there, you have some more storage space and drawer space. Now, on the old version, there was a fireplace there that is no longer there. They deleted that out. A lot of people were already doing that and wanting the extra space. Again, a lot of people are full-time style living or extended stay living in these things. So sometimes storage space is more important than aesthetics. Um, there is an option for the wall heater to go in here if you want to do the wall heater feature. Uh, and so you do still have an electric heater back here if you want. I ordered this one actually with the heat pump option on the air conditioner, which basically turns the air into an electric heat pump. Works really well um, for the fall time. If it gets super cold, you obviously want to switch over to the gas furnace, um, but you can kind of do multiple different heat setups in a Riverstone. The TV up here does have... Uh, it's a 40 inch TV, but it does have a built in sound bar into the bottom of it. And that also has an AM FM radio built into it, like the one outside. The one outside is bigger than this, uh, but you, this is basically the same setup as what you're going to see when we get out there. And it just kind of tells you entertainment TV, built in sound bar, two zones of speakers, uh, AM FM radio, Bluetooth front and rear HDMI's and USB charging. Um, also, these little black things here that you'll see, a couple of them throughout the coach, those are temperature sensors as you have three airs. You also have different zone settings that you can set these things uh, at different temperatures. Now, real quick, I want to pop up a picture real quick here of what the bed looks like in up position for you. So you can kind of see that. 
So when it is an up position, you still have your, you know, typical room to maneuver around. It doesn't really affect anything width-wise. Nice size window in the hallway area here. Um, really, really nice feature again, guys, on the Legacy or Riverstone in general. You have real wood. This is not paper-wrapped wood here. Uh, your cabinetry, you know, this door right here. This is real stained hardwood where a lot of brands cheapen up and go to a paper wrap, a veneer wrap. Another, another really nice feature, guys, is going to be the fact that the walls are thicker. So you got roughly three and a quarter inch thick sidewalls. So you have an R16 insulation value, and that gives you, again, thicker walls, allowing them to build in more residential style uh, window seals and stuff. So it just gives it, again, that more homey feel to it compared to just seeing a metal window frame with a bunch of screws in it. All right, guys, I hope that gave you a pretty good idea of the new inside. Uh, again, this is the Greystone Wood. Uh, I'm sorry, the Juno Gray Wood. And this is the Stout Stone Furniture. We also have the White Wood, and then you also have a darker furniture available. So you have a few different things available there. We're going to head outside, show you around the outside, and then we're going to close everything up, show you what it looks like closed, and we'll also hit on that... Uh, firefly system when we close everything up at the end all right guys we're now back on the outside of this brand new riverstone legacy 42 fs kg toy hauler fifth wall here um, we're going to start here in the front door side and work our way around so in the front compartment here there's two 40 pound propane tanks with the auto changeover regulator and just down below that is a propane gas hookup if you wanted to do like a portable grill or something over here to the door on the left you have your storage door so this is the front storage compartment goes all the way across the rv here you have an electric outlet in here you can see the heavy duty steel chassis frame up in here for your bath deck and everything much stronger frame than a traditional rv you have the uh, camera adapter piece up there for the side camera again you have the new voyager camera system and it was moved down here above the baggage door where the old furion was all the way up there where your running light was and apparently people were complaining a little bit about the positioning of it so when they redid it for this new Voyager system they moved it down here a little bit so hopefully you guys like that a little better right there is an electric outlet now the toy hauler comes standard with two awnings they are power awnings with built-in LED light strips and adjustable arms for tilting and water runoff. They also have the uh, manual override in the front arm head where you can pull out the little rubber piece and manually crank the uh, things in and out in case of an electronic failure. Now, I did pull the arms down on this first one here. Just wanted to kind of show you that. You can kind of see how the arms come down there into a little more of a V-shape. And this awning is down a little bit lower than the awning behind it. So you can kind of adjust them and you can tilt one side or the other if you want. Now, the vehicle will have the more ride step above step with the shock assist. At the end, I'm going to show you how that kind of works, what it looks like on uh, another video I had previously done, but I'll piece it into this one for you so you can see that. The entry door has a little bit nicer lock on it. It has a touch pad lock with the remote control, and then you have your traditional deadbolt and handle lock for keys. Large folding entry handle to help you get in and out of the RV. Your model number, so if you're out looking at an RV on a dealer's lot, that model number is going to be located next to the entry door. So take a picture of that so when you do go back in and talk with your salesperson, you can let them know what you liked. Another nice thing they do a little differently than some of the other RV makers is going to be these little insert 
vinyl inserts here and they have little removable clips so you can take that out and just have your screen but it is kind of nice to have those in there so when you do open and close your door you're not losing all of your AC if you you know just want to have that door open there so you can kind of let in a little more natural light um, you know just kind of give it that more opening feel if it's a nice fall night or whatever you know you don't have to lose everything You'll also see the little promotional sticker there that talks about their upgraded paint there with two times the clear coat as uh, most painted vehicles, most painted RVs, I guess I should say. Um, so they double up that clear coat, giving it a little bit smoother finish, less paint line feel to it, and just a little more UV protection and you know, just a little bit nicer paint job. Again, frameless dual pane windows. So you have two layers of glass there, and all of these windows do actually open. The two toy hauler models, this front kitchen and the front living room, are both triple axle units. Um, they have disc brakes standard, so you have hydraulic over electric disc brakes. Now, that is part of the legacy package on all the other models. It is technically an option on the Riverstone and Riverstone Reserve versions um, if you wanted to do something along those lines. Or I'm sorry, the Riverstone version. Um, the unit does come standard with the suspension in between, you can see there as well. Kind of acts like shocks for an RV. Just above the uh, tires there is a large midship light there. That is a midship turn signal. So when you are trying to turn as you're getting over on the highway, those uh, lights will blink, letting people know. Most brands do not have a midship turn signal. So if somebody's up beside you, they don't know you're trying to get over unless they happen to catch the light off of your truck. There is a large pass-through storage across the back section here as well. So this is where of the bulk of your storage would be, where traditionally in most fifth wheels it's up toward the front. But you do have a big storage compartment here. You have motion lights in all these compartments also. So you can turn the light on, turn it off, or set it in motion mode. And then right back here on the wall is also an electric outlet. If you order the outside mini fridge, it goes in this compartment and plugs into that outlet. Now, while we're up here kind of close, these are the new JBL speakers outside. They're bigger, a little bit louder, a little better sounding than the old versions. And that is tied into the TV that you're seeing pop up here on the screen. So you have a large flat screen TV out here on a swing arm. And that TV ties into those speakers so you not only listen to the sound out of the TV but it'll come out of those speakers if you want you can turn those on and off that TV has a sound bar built into the bottom of it just like the one in the bedroom and it also has an FM radio station tuner built into it as well so you can listen to the radio out here separately from the one inside but really, really beautiful paint job on the outside of this. And another thing I really like on their paint job that they do that most brands don't, and it's going to be a little hard to see here in the garage, but we're going to zoom in for just a second here. And you can somewhat see that rollover roof line right there. That is actually painted. A lot of brands will not paint that because they use a rubber roof or a non-paintable roof where this TPO style roof is actually paintable. So that rollover roof section is painted to match the body of the RV. Nice improvement to the overall aesthetic look of the top line of the RV. Now back here you have a small storage compartment. Again, another motion light built in there. And then you do have another electric outlet here as well. On around to the back, this is the toy hauler part or garage part, whatever you want to refer to it as. 
Um, it's not a full-blown toy hauler uh, that you would traditionally think of, but you can fit a golf cart in here. Uh, some of the older Can-Am Spiders and stuff will fit in here pretty comfortably. And even if you're not taking a toy with you and you just want storage, you can cram a lot of stuff in there. So for you full-timers, kind of consider that as well. You may not have you know, a motorcycle or golf cart or something you want to take with you at the time of buying, but you can pack a whole lot of stuff in there. So if you're full time in this thing, you could, you know, put all your winter clothes in there in the summertime and switch it up again. You know, put your tools in there, uh, whatever you want in there. You know, you can pack a lot of stuff. That thing is capable of holding up to 2,000 pounds in that garage area if you need to. Now, do keep in mind, though, that takes away from your overall carrying capacity. The door is an upgraded door as well. This is a More Ride Zero G ramp door. I'll show you that too again. Um, but this door basically holds itself up. It's not a heavy spring assist style door, the old style doors like you'll find on lesser priced RVs. So this door is real simple, lightweight, easy to put up. A child can do this. You have backup lights and your turn signals, LED lights back here as well. It's nice to have backup lights. Again, this is a very long coach. It's all the way back here in the rear end. You know, you're trying to maneuver around and stuff. You want to be able to see when you put the thing in reverse, especially at a campground at night. You also have like little docking lights up there um, to kind of help give you a look around here as well. And the Voyager camera up top there is also right there in the center. You can kind of see up there. That is the new camera that they're offering. Now in the garage area here, you have the rubber like diamond plate looking floor. So when you do roll something up in there, it's less likely to slip. It gives it a little bit of grip on that flooring. You have a little bit of diamond plate around the lower portion to just kind of help protect the wall a little bit. And you have four motion lights in here as well. Now, again, you could turn them on, turn them off, or turn them in motion mode. You have a fire extinguisher back here. You also have two vents back here as well. And there's an electric outlet in there also. So you could plug something in, uh, for example, your golf cart. You know, if you got an electric battery operated golf cart, plug the charger in there plug in your golf cart, charge it up while it's sitting in the vehicle if you need to. Now, this is currently in down mode. Um, I will also show you at the end of the video, um, I'll piece together one of the other ones I've done where I show you how the bed goes up and down. The controls for it are on the left-hand side. You'll again see that in the video here later on. On around to this side, you have more storage compartment area here. And again, more motion lights. Goes all the way across there, so you can put a little bit longer items in there. Now, this door will flip up. And below that is your powered power cord reel. That is right here in this section. It has a magnetic holder. You can lock it, feed the power cord through here if you want. Um, I'm not really setting up like permanently, so I just kind of laid it out there. But you have your powered power cord reel with the button there on the right to roll that thing up and down. I will flip this door up here too. Now another nice thing on these doors, again, we're going more toward a full-timer type of RV here. So your baggage doors are much thicker than what you're going to find on a cheaper RV. So heavy-duty baggage door, you're finding better locks as well. And these are metal and not the plastic slam locks as well that you're going to find on some brands. Over here is where they moved the storage uh, for the uh, dump hose here. So on the Legacy package, it comes with this fancier dump hose, which does have the uh, on-off thing on it as well. On around to this side, again, the other side of the big storage compartment. And again, your door just kind of goes up. Over to this side, you have 
outside utility shower so hot and cold water right here satellite and cable hookups as well another motion on off light here another satellite inlet here you have your controls for your water system dry camp power fill city water winterization sanitize so you can kind of fill your fresh water tank everything you need to do right here there is your bathroom gray and your black water tank handle right here as well and again this door will close and you can feed your water hose right through here or your cable inlets as well the legacy version comes standard with the truma aqua go on-demand water heater I have it opened up here there is an on off switch here that you got to make sure you do turn on um, so you can turn it off there for safety reasons if for storage reasons whatever you don't have to have that on so it kind of overrides the one inside the RV um, another thing I forgot to mention when you upgrade to the legacy package it also changes the tires to Goodyear tires nothing wrong with the tires that were you know standard on there but you do get the Goodyear name brand tire if that matters much to you they are both the same size tire again 17 and a half inch H rated tires so you get a bigger rim and tire heavier duty on the Riverstone brand versus some other brands that I also sell there um, so a little bit different up in between the two slides there you have another light on the side here and you also have your dryer exhaust vent there as well that stackable washer dryer we've seen when we were inside is vented out the side of the rv so it blows out the moisture easier now looking down below here you're going to see a couple more handles here so you have a gray hand a galley handle back here and you also have your freshwater tank dump back here as well. Now that freshwater tank dump is an inch and a half gate valve like you would get out of a gray tank. So it will dump out much faster than the traditional 3 8 inch water line that some brands use as a dump. Your actual dump area right there as well. You can also see your spare tire underneath of there. Again, two... 15 by 75 17 and a half inch tires there guys big tires now, this unit was also ordered with the slide out awning covers so you can see the slide awnings are covered and those slide awning covers along with even the main awnings have an aluminum wrap to them a metal casing so when these things roll up as you close it up they are protected better from like uv rays of storage storing the rv from you know tree branches you might be driving down the road and a tree overhang might brush against it or something you know that encases that vinyl material in there to help protect it so that that awning will last you a lot longer Over here, you have the other side of the front storage compartment. Now, in here, you have your 1,500-watt Go Power inverter. That runs the refrigerator off battery power. It runs the theater seat in your living room TV. Um, so it runs a few things in the camper off of battery power when you're boondock camping. Front dock light switches. Uh, lighting switch you have your auto level jack system right here so you basically just turn this thing on hit your auto level button or go through the menu do your manual controls whatever you want to do with it you can do right here low point water drain is right there along with the ice maker on off valve battery disconnect right here as well and then you have the water manifold system here this allows you to turn on and off individual water lines in case of a leak or a malfunction so you don't have to shut down the whole coach just for one leaky water line 
Hopefully you don't ever have any leaky water lines, but if you do, you can control it right there. Now up top, there's a little heat vent that blows heat down into the basement area here. Again, just to try and make this uh, more easier to use in the cold weather. And down below here, you can see a little trap door that pops up. And that does uh, the hydraulic um, pump for your slide outs and things like that. Now behind this next door is your battery trays. There's room for up to four batteries. They are on sliding trays. So you could do, you know, four six volts or four 12 volts or, you know, different types of batteries that you may want to do on the RV. This RV was ordered with the optional generator. So down below you are seeing the generator exhaust come out the side right there. If you don't get the generator, feature then you will not have that exhaust sticking out down there on around to the front area here you can see the onan 5500 watt propane generator right there to the right is the uh, brake fluid holder for your disc brakes then up inside there you can also see there is a light up there there is also on the left the changeover box for that generator electric system. Now next you're going to see pop up here. We're going to do some weight stickers before we go on around to the front side. And you'll see your gross vehicle weight sticker. So popping up there is the gross weight of 21,000 pounds. That's the most you can load the RV up to um, safely they recommend. And next, you're going to see the weight sticker pop up here for your dry weight. Off the top of my head, I think it was like 17, 7 and some change you're seeing pop up there. So you could do just a hair over 3,000 pounds of capacity. Next is going to be your uh, cargo carrying sticker. After that, you're going to see your tire sticker pop up there with your tire size and tire pressure. Again, make sure you check your tire pressure. Really, really important to check that. The tires are rated to hold a certain amount of weight at a certain pressure. If you do not have the proper pressure in there, the tire cannot hold the proper weight of the RV. On around to the front side here, guys, you can see we have the LED light strips built in and on here so you have the riverstone legacy paint logo up there light down below as well for the hitch light this was ordered with the trail air air ride pen box this is an option uh, some customers prefer the more ride and you can do that aftermarket but riverstone forest river in general offers the trail air air ride on a lot of their fifth wheel brands so if this interests you, talk with your salesperson about it. Many dealers stock it with that as a standard feature. Again, guys, be sure to like, share, subscribe if you're interested in keeping up with more of my videos, trying to update all these new RVs as they come in for you guys. Um, we're going to go inside, close this thing up. I want to show you what it looks like closed. And then we will kind of do the whole thing on the golf cart in the back, the door opening, the step up, all that type of stuff. We'll piece those in at the end for you. All right, guys, we're now back up inside the RV. And I wanted to show you how these slides work, what it looks like closed with them going in and out. So you have a new system now, this Firefly system. And basically when I go to the slides on this system, it might be a little hard to see here in the screen, but um, it has my three electric slides, which are basically the upstairs two and the bedroom one. And you're also gonna have your two downstairs hydraulic slides. But along with the slides is the awning buttons as well. So you have your in and out button for your rear awning, your front awning, electric slide one, electric slide two, 
electric slide three. And you have your off door slide for your downstairs and your door slide for your downstairs, which are two hydraulic instead of electric rooms. So that is where those are controlled. Your air conditioning is also real simple to do. You just hit the HVAC button, brings up all three of your airs right here. Set the temperature to what you want, put it on auto, high, low, turn it on obviously. Um, this one was ordered with a heat pump on the bedroom AC system. So I could turn it on the heat pump as an electric heater. You could get heat pumps on all three if you truly wanted to. Um, but most dealers, including myself, when I order these things, I stock it with the heat pump one. You have your furnace button to turn it over to furnace as well. So you can turn that on all right here. So real simple, easy to do. Go back over to your lights. I have a master switch here. I just shut down all the lights inside the coach except for the ceiling fan light, which is a 110 volt version. Just turned them all back on. I have a mood lighting here. I can hit the button and basically with the mood lighting, I'm going to turn this off here, living room mood lighting. Basically it turns on a lot of the lights, but at like half power, so it's dimmed. Bedroom, you'll see pop up back there a little bit. I just turned on the bedroom mood lighting at half power. So pretty cool new light system. Uh, hit the button to turn them all back on. Pretty simple little setup. You can also turn on and off your outside lights as well that way. But you can shut things down just by playing with all these buttons in here. Pretty neat little setup. Now another neat little thing is this part right over here. These are your controls as well. So you can turn off all the lights, do some slides, do individuals. But these are not wired in. These are technically battery operated. You could take this off, mount it up here. You could mount it over here. You can move that around if you want to. But you will see a handful of those like this in different parts of the RV to allow you to control them. But you have the power to move your switches around as it sends a wireless signal into the system. Now, next button, you have an electric button up here, which will kind of tell you some of the different features of what's going on with your electric system go back to the home screen here and now we have some more information we have again our house battery setup we have our generator start stop button water pump button 12 volt tank heater button to heat up the holding tanks we have our tank levels another master switch water heater button so there's some different controls right there then it also tells you a little bit over here about the true tank information some firefly stuff Again, more Firefly stuff. I would definitely go to the FireflyInt.com website. You can read about that. Sticker here about the 24-hour roadside assistance through Safe Ride that Forest River gives you one year free for. Fantastic fan controls, inverter button, ceiling fan button. So a lot of switches, a lot going on right here. This system, though, is much, much faster than the LCI system. It cost them a few hundred dollars more to do this, but it's really quick reacting to the touch of what's going on. You know, you've probably seen in my other videos, sometimes I'd get a little double tappy, frustrated with playing with the buttons. This new system, much quicker. Really like it. So now let's get back to what we started on. We are going to close up these slides. Now this is done from this control panel. So I can't stand here and take the camera back, so my helper behind me is going to actually do the magic for us. But uh, basically all you got to do is hit the button to bring the room in, and hit the button to bring the room back out. So here you can go ahead and see what this looks like. So when this bedroom slide comes in, it basically butts right up against the side of your bed. 
So you don't have to technically open that if you don't want to when you're back here sleeping. So if you're stopping at a rest area or something and you wanted to come back here and go to bed, you could bump out the one slide out to allow you to get back here but not have to open up this one. So to take it on back out, all you got to do is push the button again and that slide will go right on back out. Real simple and easy to do. That is a Schwentech in-wall slide. Um, you can find out more information about that on the LippertLCI1.com website. They have all kinds of information on that. And another thing, Forest River has started doing a lot of how-to and little helpful videos that are on their website now. And they are starting to get those up. Their YouTube videos they're doing to try and help show people the operations of things and how things work. Uh, there's a lot of newcomers coming into the RV world that don't know anything about campers. So they're working on that for you guys too. So again, we ran that slide in and out for you here. I want to show you how these other ones actually work as well. So kitchen slide here. This one is electric slide two. Now when you bring this in and out, you obviously want to make sure your cabinet doors are closed. Make sure they didn't happen to pop open on you as you're traveling down the road. They really shouldn't because they're pretty hefty magnetic holders on those doors. But when this comes in, you can kind of see, comes in pretty close to your oven. And same thing will happen on the other one over here. It'll come in close to that island. You can kind of see when it is closed up, you can't really get past it to come back here and get to your fridge or anything like that. So you will have to bump a slide out out in order to get to that area. So next we're going to bring in the other one here. Again, guys, be sure to check out Couch's RV Nation, guys. They will definitely save you guys a lot of money on a new RV if you're interested. They have a build and price area built right into their website where you can actually build and price every floor plan and every brand of camper that they sell. It will email you back a price. So you go on there, pick the options that you want. It'll shoot you back a price. Check your junk mail because sometimes that's where it ends up at when you do request that price. But it'll shoot it right on back to you. Usually within about 30 seconds. So pretty simple. When that is in, you can still get up here a little bit and kind of do a little bit of stuff. But you're not going to really get back into that cabinetry area unless you want to open a slide or obviously climb over top of the counter. So next, we're going to run this back out. Again, real simple setup. Another thing that's kind of nice too, you'll see there on the side of that slide out, that is also painted the base color. A lot of brands don't paint the sides of their slide out. Um, so that is something that is a little bit nicer. When the unit is open, the sides of the slides are painted. Some brands don't do that. They just paint the exterior sidewalls only. Downstairs wise, these are going to be your hydraulic slides. Now these are a little bit faster than the electric slides that we just ran in and out. But you have, let's see here, off door slide retract. Hit the button here, slide comes right on in. Real simple. So if you do need to come in and get to something, that slide pretty much doesn't have to go in or out really for hardly anything. So you can pretty much bank on leaving that one in for most of the time unless you're truly camping. Now the other slide here, this is your door slide, door side slide they call it. 
And when you go to bring this in, this does technically block you off from the bathroom and bedroom area. Okay. So now, when you come in, you can still get in here if you need to for your desk area. Um, you can come in and obviously get to the overhead area as well. So you can kind of come back here for part of the use of some stuff. But it will shut you off from the bedroom area. So you will have to bump out that slide. And again door side slide just hit the extend button and it goes right back out now if you need to stop and you only just need to bump it out a little bit to get by you can do so um, now obviously you don't want to do that in the rain because it's not sealed unless it's all the way in or out the wiper gaskets do repel and protect it from a lot of water, but it's not going to stop 100% of the stuff. Um, so make sure it's all the way out or all the way in if you really truly are going to try and use it in the rain kind of thing. Um, but again, just hit the button again to continue the rest of the way out. Real simple. Same thing on the other side. Hit that button. Again, guys, thank you for checking out my videos. We are going to bounce back to the outside, show you some more stuff on that garage setup with a golf cart and stuff, and we're going to piece in some more to the end of this video. Thanks again, guys. Uh, today we're going to do a quick little showing of a golf cart in the Riverstone Toy Hauler 5th Wheel. We get a lot of requests from customers asking to see something actually loaded in this thing. Um, so I had an old lot golf cart here. And uh, just wanted to kind of give you a quick idea of how it sets up inside there, the way it all kind of looks, and kind of show you how much room is still around it. All right, so we got her loaded up in there. As you can see, again, just a little two-seater golf cart. So there's still plenty of room at the end here. Plenty of room on both sides of the area. And obviously, I got it a little more over to the right side there, so it gave me a little more room to squeeze myself out of there. Again, guys, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you're interested in keeping up with more of my videos. I'm trying to update a lot of the information for you. Gonna squeeze back up in here. You can kind of see here, still room around. We're not touching the wall or anything in there. You have an electric outlet in here, a couple other uh, lights back up in there. Those are motion lights also. But pretty easy setup, not real hard to put up and down in there. Again, guys, check out CouchesRVNation.com. They let me do these little videos for you guys. One of the largest internet wholesale dealers in the country. Will definitely save you a lot of money on a new RV. Hey everyone and welcome to this portion of the RV video. I wanted to take a minute and show you this ramp door back here. This is the nicer, a little bit more expensive, more ride zero G ramp door. You'll notice you don't see the big spring assist helper down here. This door goes up and down a lot easier and a lot uh, less weight feeling to it when you're trying to raise it up and down. Pretty simple setup. Hit the little key lock right there. The thing comes unlocked. 
You can see it's actually holding itself up. It's not trying to fall down and hit me. Pull it on down the rest of the way here. You can kind of stop somewhere in between if you need to. And it goes right on down nice and easy. Now, as you've seen, we had a golf cart we put up in there just a little bit ago. I'm gonna move this a little bit closer to give you a little bit better idea of what this garage looks like empty here. And you can see in here, you have four motion lights or you can turn them off or on mode kind of thing. There is also a fire extinguisher in there and an electric outlet in there. I love the electric outlet idea, so you can plug different things in in here. But if you have that electric golf cart, you can charge it up while it's stored in here. Pretty cool setup. Now, to bring this thing up or down, I'll put the measurements of the garage and stuff um, in the description below. But basically, the width of the frame right here is about 64 and a half, 65 inches roughly. And then height-wise, you're looking at about, when it's all the way up, roughly about 83 to 84 inches, um, kind of depending on the exact unit. I've seen it come in roughly about 84 in some and 83 in others, so it is slightly different. Um, but to take it up and down, all you gotta do is just push this button right here. So this is bringing it on down. Now, obviously going up, is a little bit slower because it's got the weight of it going up and down. And this is basically an electric system by Lippert. It's called the Slim Rack system, which is similar to the in-wall slide that they also use. Um, but basically it's a slide out mechanism. So this actually goes straight up and straight down. Um, seen a used one coming here the other day, not a Riverstone, another brand that actually was doing something similar floor plan to this. And it had like one little cheap motor and that one little motor had a couple shock helpers and it actually pushed the bed up, but also forward creating like a foot gap in between here. So it wasn't very sealed at all. Um, so it just made a big open airspace for all your fumes to just go right on up inside the RV. I thought it was a pretty crappy design when I actually seen it. It's the first time I've seen one like that. But, uh, you know, this one right here, pretty neat little setup, guys. I uh, hope that kind of helped show you a little bit about this thing here. And again, even if you don't have that motorcycle or you don't have that golf cart, that is a huge amount of storage for you full-timers or extended stay campers. You can pack, you know, toolboxes, full-size grills, uh, winter clothes, you know, switching out your seasons of clothing, whatever you need to put back there. You know, that's a lot of space for travel. All right, guys, we're gonna head over to the step area now. Hey guys, and welcome to this portion of the RV video. I wanted to take a minute and show you this more ride step. I'm always talking about it when I'm behind the camera and going by, but I thought I'd take a minute and actually show you how the step functions. Uh, we're standing here in front of this beautiful Riverstone Legacy toy hauler front kitchen. And I thought I'd just kind of show you how this actually functions. This is again, the more ride step above step with the shock assist that they have standard on the main entry door of the Riverstone Legacy and the other two Riverstone lineups as well. But this step here, again, you can kind of see it's holding itself up. So nice and lightweight feel to it when it's going in and out. Um, and that, again, that's because of that shock assist there. But you have adjustable feet here for the uh, different terrain you might be on as you're putting down your steps. This just flips right back inside the RV here. And then you close your door and you're ready to hit the road. So nice and functional. When you pull it out, you just kind of grab a hold of it, pull it on down, adjust your feet as needed. Nice and sturdy step. You know, when you're going in and out of the RV, it's nice and easy. It's not shaking the whole camper real bad. That's great even on like bunkhouse RVs because uh, again, you got kids running in and out all the time. So it doesn't shake the camper as bad. But heavy duty step compared to the traditional hover step. Super nice upgrade in my opinion. Hope that kind of helped show you the step. 